there's some copies of the uh, previous minutes up there for anybody that hasn't seen them. I'll give you a couple minutes to uh, take a look at them if you want. Yes, ma'am. Always get your back. <laughs> you get both of them. Thank you. Once you re you've reviewed the minutes, I'll accept the motion to accept the minutes. There's just a, a couple of quick things that, that I have. Um, I got a call from the uh, Department of Health that asked that we um, resubmit our letters for our representation on the uh, CMAC committee. That would be myself, Andrew Knoll, and Dr. Tackett. Um, does anybody in the room have any objection to uh, those three individuals representing us on the CMAC? I'm interested in being on that. to do it again if uh, no other physicians were interested and we didn't have any physicians that were. Anybody else uh, other than Mr. McKnight? Okay, if everybody's in favor, we'll, we'll get those letters in and we'll uh, then the state has to determine whether or not they're acceptable. I'm sure that there won't be any problems with them accepting them, but uh, it's just the process that they go through. The other thing is at the last REMAC meeting, um, they're making progress on the collaborative protocols. They're talking about having a rollout by uh, May now. The training and education portion of it, they're contemplating whether or not they're going to just uh, follow the model that the Melrems region has used. Um, that's still up in the air as far as that. But uh, they are making progress and they're hoping that um, with the rollout and everything it'll be uh, sometime early May is the last that we've been told. Early May of this year? Yeah, well they, they didn't <laughs> specify. They didn't specify. That's a good point, John. Hopefully, yeah, May of this year. 
The other thing that uh, was a big topic of discussion at the REMAC meeting was the age cutoff for uh, taking patients to Children's Hospital versus ECMC. Um, they seem to come up with the um, age of 19, I believe it was, for adult. And then they're uh, ne not necessarily saying that you absolutely can't take a patient of a, a younger age to ECMC, but um, preferably they'd, they'd like you to go to Children's if you're, if you're going to the Buffalo area, obviously. If you're going to the Rochester area, you just go to Strong and it's one-stop shopping, but um, they're supposed to be coming out with some specific guidelines for that as well. The other thing for uh, REMAC, Dr. Aaron Farney is going to be one of our at-large uh, representatives. His letter was accepted. Um, some of you are familiar with him. He's uh, with Jeremy Cushman's group, and he's the medical director for um, a good part of Orleans County and Cove Ambulance Service. Is anybody from Children's there to discuss that specifically for their patients? Because there was, I think there's some communication problems. There, there, there is. Oh, she was. Mm -hmm. yeah. She was feisty, too. There, it was all on the phone. Okay. Yeah, it was, uh, no, Joe Zeppelin on the phone. The other one was in the room. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a battle back and forth, and supposedly they're coming out with some concrete guidelines, but that's that's yet to be. Uh, the trauma lecture we just had at Ridgeway, which there's another one being put on here in Western New York by Malachi Fisher, or it just happened? Who just had him? Somebody in Iron County? He's coming or, March 14th to Ridgeway again. Oh, he's coming back. Okay. Because that was, if they hit their 17th birthday, Children's didn't want them, correct? Children's director said she wanted them until 21. But then they kick, they kick so this the is the outreach program nice, that nice children was doing to come out and say, hey, fire departments, this is what we want yeah. you to send us. And then, so I believe it was 16th birthday and 362 days they went to the other one. I, I, I'm pretty sure when Malachi said that because there was several questions in the room related to that. Obviously, they don't want the pregnant moms coming in. That was, that was another big discussion of that, of who gets the, the pregnant patient. But it was specifically for the peds, and it was 17th birthday and up was to go to the county. So, more to follow, I guess. <laughs> but it seems like that's been going on for quite some time. That, yeah, it has been. That battle it has been more. Sounds like it's uh, much more convenient to go to Strong. Or Either the first left door or the second left door. Exactly. Like you said, one stop shopping up there. Well, we had a, we had an incident happen here a few years ago where both both facilities were contacted their medical control line, and either both of them were throwing the patient back and forth. They didn't want. Them. So if we can prevent that from happening to some other providers. That'd be helpful. Absolutely. But hopefully they'll get that all settled, and we'll obviously keep you updated. The next item is the, uh, we have to start having our training and education committee um, formally meet. Um, I know we've been busy with all the CONs and everything, but starting with the next meeting, the training and education committee is going to meet at 6.30 here prior to the um, general meeting. The um, chair for that training and education committee is going to be Terry Bentley. And then the, the last list that I have for people that are on the committee, in addition to Terry, will be Mike Fuller, Sue Barron, and Barb Mortolino. Move on to the treasurer's report. That's all the all I have for this evening. I put some reports over there. Uh, since that report, I had to write another check. We have a balance of $17.51 left in our account. Yes. I gave a $5,000 check with my CON. Does anybody know where it is? It was cash. We were by Mr. Mallon check. On 10-11, a deposit of $5,000. That's Mercy's. That's Mercy's. There, there's is in there as well somewhere so because we did get a, a check I think from no I know we got a check from I Cova. Didn't, I didn't deposit it and I don't have a deposit slip. Okay. We did get I know we have it so it was cashed. I have a copy of it. Yeah. So it mercy's not cashed yet? Is that 
that was a five thousand dollar deposit as well. That one was. Oh, that should be. In there. That was ten eleven. I yeah. deposited that one. I never saw. I never saw another. Yeah, it was before you. Yeah. Okay. Because that that is part of it, but I think part of it may be the overexpending when we were spending the money, and then the state wasn't paying us back. Because they're not in a separate account, which... When I started, we had $1,851.81. Yes. So I deposited five. It brought the six, 6851. I've written two checks four times. Another check for our web page was 17. So mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know. And I'm unable to find out anything from the bank because we haven't officially... Are we voting? I don't know if we're... We got the like signature I, cards. So yeah, yeah, you just have to do. Yeah, I, yeah, we have to do name changes, and I have to have a, a letter, a letter from here with the minutes, and go to the bank. But right now, I can't do anything. Right? And they won't even tell me who's been able to sign. But they've been cashing his checks, so it, it's a mess. The banking's a mess. Yeah, that's all. That's always when you go to the bank. They always want. Right. That kind of stuff. I don't know why they're enforcing it all of a sudden. Ours does the same with the fire hall right so now. Do you, do you know thing. specifically what they're requiring from us now? you got to have the minutes, and then you guys got to go in with sign your signature cards yeah. with your driver's license. Right, we all so have, have to stay in the minutes. Yeah. Yeah. But these certain people are allowed to sign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can pull right. up the election minutes and print them Yeah, off. you can print that as well. Well, the election minutes you're going to need a motion that says that these, these people. people. Yeah. Right. Are allowed because the election doesn't have anything to do with it. They're the authorized signers. Yeah, the, the, the following people are authorized signers and have full responsibility for this account. And then uh, she has to uh, she told sign me it's, it's minutes of who can sign the checks, officers' names, um, and our address change. Because right now she can't even tell me where the mail goes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You got one once, didn't you? Yeah. Just one, and then nothing else has come in since then. Right. Because the one time I went in and made a change, they never put it through. And then, but then we moved again since then. So. And the bank is right here. So. Um, yeah. And those are the people I was dealing with. It needs to get done tonight so that we can figure out. Well, obviously, going. obviously, our permanent address now is the Lake Plains. Yes. And that should never change. That's on letterhead. In East Maine. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and then I need the minutes. For so you need me to make a motion. So yes. Cheryl, you fill out the checks. I and you do the, the banking. So yes. then you should have signed. But I'm not signing. Okay. So do you want to list like Steve and Wade? So you have a choice? Well, at least two. Yeah. Um, Triton does four. We, it, you know, well, I don't know. The chair of the finance the committee. It's yeah. the executive I think, board. Usually, I think John should be sign. authorized. You want to have more. You want to have more than one because usually you need two signatures per check. Right. But yeah. you need to have at least four yeah. people to pick from because it's difficult to get checks. Mm -hmm. you well, know. then do your other Fine. three officers and John. So make yeah. a motion for yep. Steve Cooley, Terry Bentley, Wade Schwab, and John Duran. Okay, I made that motion. I second it. Chuck Burns seconds it. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> you don't get to say anything. Okay. I'll get you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. And hopefully we can figure out where that. Mm -hmm. Move on to the program agency report. Uh, did quite a few trainings, uh, just some approval approvals. Miller Hose and Rapids are doing BLS CPAP. Kendall is doing nasal naloxone. Uh, there's quite a few different EMT classes going out through all three counties. Uh, state of EMS, New York State EMS meeting with Director Lee Burns was on November 15th. There was a decent turnout, and many issues were discussed, were brought up. BLS 12 lead acquisition and transmission documents are out and they're approved by REMAC and they're available on the REMAC website or Lake Plains. Uh, for BLSFR updates, make sure agencies are completing when requested by the New York State Bureau. Uh, agencies become at risk of losing their BLSFR if they are not completed in a timely fashion. Uh, make sure you're sending a copy to the program agency in REMSCO. 
Uh, we're trying to fix the disconnect sometimes with the state and the REMSCOs and uh, program agencies of getting information. Niagara Falls Memorial Cath Lab has a tentative date of April 1st of opening. Uh, it's just waiting for some more details on when they're going to be running, rolling out some classes to let the providers know about that. City of Lockport Fire is pursuing their ALSFR level from the BLSFR level. Part 800 requirement of controlled substances for the CC level or higher. The final date cutoff was February 1st. And all agencies through Big Lakes region are actually in compliance. Uh, there was one that was sent out saying that there was two agencies of Tritown and Shawnee. However, Tritown had theirs quite some time and they just never updated it. And Shawnee has already submitted theirs. Uh, check and inject has actually just been approved by the health commissioner. Uh, now BLS protocols, training, options, availability, and supplying of epi and obtaining a syringe is outside the specifically marked version. Uh, those questions are going to be answered at a later date. Uh, as soon as we find out, we'll be notifying everybody else. So essentially, like the pilot program is done, it's been approved. So now you're going to be able to purchase them on your own. But when that comes out, we'll figure that one out. And then I was just going to, as Wade was saying about the education and training, uh, definitely should be uh, including everybody through the three regions on what classes, things like that, are, are needed throughout the three counties. Uh, I'd like to be included on that so that way we can start pushing more classes and uh, see if we can get more doctors involved with training and uh, in the th all three counties. Uh, that's pretty much about it that I got. Under the training and education, Sean, did you have some dates there from the city of Tavia? Yeah, the, well first, the counties already started their AEMT class and they currently got 18 people enrolled and that one's going to be completed in June. The city of Batavia is going to be putting on an EMR class. That's going to start March 14th and end around May 18th. So we'll get some flyers out for that. Tom isn't here tonight, but he was going to bring those to pass out. So we'll make sure to get them distributed to everybody. Um, that was it. At this point, does anybody have any new business that they'd like to bring to the council? I just, just a couple of things. Um, I don't know if you're all aware, the Oakfield Fire Department has an honor guard. We recently just had a member of our department that had passed. I know a lot of members from Medina Fire and surrounding departments all came to pay their respects. Um, it was the first time that we actually did, um, I guess if you want to use the lack, lack of a better term, though, you know, we were called to duty. Um, and I guess everyone was very impressed with what we did so far. The Oakfield Honor Guard has also been asked to come back down to Arlington to the Marines Barracks at 8th and I again. We're going to be heading down there February 21st through the 24th. And this time we're going to be working with the body bearers from the Marines. Um, that if anybody in a neighboring county we're just throwing it out there, has the need for um, a line of duty death or wants some help putting on a funeral service for one of their past members, needs any um, props like pipe poles or flags or that, you can always reach out to me, reach out to the county, they'll get in touch with us. We have a core group of six guys. I think we train more than we do for the fire department side, even though they're there on Monday nights, they're there every Tuesday night for training as well. Mm -hmm. So they're a group of dedicated people that are uh, moving forward with this. And if you also are interested in forming your own honor guard, your own department, again, reach out to us. We train every Monday or every Tuesday night starting at 7 o'clock. So, um, if you want more information, you know, see me afterwards and I can get you some more, some more details. 
The other thing was one of our members is a coroner and he was at a conference and I don't know if anybody's heard of this or where this is but he mentioned to me that I guess EMS personnel, fire personnel are going into overdose scenes or you know you could call it a hazmat scene because of the material that's there and they're coming across some white powder and some of the medics have actually died because they've come in contact with a white powdery substance that's not identified and I guess the coroners are basically saying right now if you go to a scene and you see some white powder if the person's already dead you're not saving them you know it's protect yourself first and get out you know even if the person you know is in need you know you see that white powder you better make sure you're pretty well protected wearing your basic personal protective equipment our department started about a year ago every EMS call we put on our full turnout gear it sounds ridiculous but we've gone into contact with someone who's overdosing already you know she's snorting something when we come into the building we don't know what it is but right away you know you already have a white powder we've gone to a few calls already this year alone where it's like a crime scene with the amount of blood that's in there you know from them bleeding so we're not putting our members at risk by getting bloodborne pathogens on their personal protective or on their clothes we'd rather have it on department issued gear so we can address it when we get back to the halls so, but I don't know if anybody else has heard of that that just there was discussed at the coroner's conference that was held within the past six months in the southern tier um, I spoke with Rocky Sideri. They had started discussing the Chinese writing on the white packaging. There was a red number across the center. It was some super type of um, <clears throat> manufactured synthetic opiate. Um, we did have one in this county here prior to that conference because he said, wait, we saw it. Cause at that point, they hadn't seen it in Western New York. <laughs> so it is there. Um, we're not sure what the substance actually turned out to be. That's where there's some lack of communication, but I know they were going to meet with the Monroe County's Medical Examiner's Office, the coroner's here. That happened a while ago. I was going to ask Dale, but he's obviously out of town. So that took place a while ago, but yeah. it's, it's around. Just it's, a, it's, around. It's, it's just the basic, you know, protect yourselves, make sure your guys are doing the, the basics. So right. that's the only two things I got on that. Anybody else have anything they'd like to bring up? Any old business that we still have to sell other than what was brought up tonight? What about the COA for Niagara County and the appeals and all that stuff? Well, that's, that's on my next list. See if the CON <laughs> committee chair will uh, Well, uh, the Mercy Con, we did our bit. We sent all our documentation into the state. Um, they've com received our complete packet. Um, <clears throat> It has gone to the appeal process because, um, oh, I'm trying to think. AMR? AMR, Twin, Twin City. City, and Tri Community are, are appealing it, you just know, collectively. Two. So Just the two. Just the two. And there's an appeal process that it has to go through. They have to <coughs> assign it down to J. And as that process continues, they basically will contest you know the process or whatever they're going to contest and at that point the LJ gets that information they distribute it back to us they'll give it to me and we'll supply our I guess rebuttal if you will as to what somebody is stating and it's kind of a back and forth type of situation where they'll you know point out you know a deficiency of some sort and we'll rebut that and it will just go back and forth until the LJ says I've got enough information to make my verdict and he'll either rule in favor or against what we've done so that process I am told can go anywhere from six months it's kind of an average to a year up to two years so they've seen it go runs the gambit so they really couldn't tell us what kind of time frame this is going to be but as of now, I have received nothing back because if I get something, this committee, the entire council will know because that's just what I give. 
Percy operating in Niagara County or not? Yeah. Just, just in the town of Niagara. Just as they were before. Have, have, you, have you seen, I'm curious if I haven't seen yet, the documents filed by Bolt for the appeal? How do we get copies of those? Um, I'll ask Dana. I'm just, I'm just curious because my legislature would like to know is including the state representatives. Yeah, I, I, I know that it went out and that's all I was told. Okay. So, but I'll ask and see if we can have a copy and should be able to bring yeah. new information. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't see why not. We we were pretty free with everything we provided. Yeah. So. <clears throat> oh yeah, oh yeah. Just get more. Yeah, yeah. We we had uh, most recently two Saturdays ago, sixty-two minutes to get an ambulance to a broken leg. So things are doing great. It's an hour of learning to deal with pain. Yeah. <laughs> the woman was much stronger when she got to the hospital. <laughs> And then we also, just to follow up while we're on the cons, we do have the COVACON. We've got additional information from them, and the committee is going to meet after this uh, meeting, the CON committee, just to discuss that information and move that process forward. And did uh, spend all of the $5,000? From Mercy. Mercy? Yeah, then they'll get a letter. Asking for it, they already know they're going to get the letter and so, to replace the funds. Uh, how much did it go over that five thousand? They did. Yeah. I know. I was going to say where they just go. How was it? Like? Oh, what was it? Forty, forty-nine for. Yeah. Four thousand seven hundred and three, and then another one for two thousand thirty-one. So. What are those for? Transcript work and court reporting. Yeah, the attorney's fee was forty-seven. Yeah, mileage, everything. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. She was she was not cheap. She told us right off the bat it was four hundred dollars an hour plus expenses. I said I'm in the wrong, 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 wrong job. Wrong. But I can tell you that the state, you know, talking with people like Dana and Dan Clayton, the people that watched the full thing, they were very impressed with her. Well, so she did not want that. Yeah, I mean. It's the first one I've ever had to sit through, but when they when I heard that comment, I was like, oh, okay. So. Yeah, it might, might be a cheap $400 an hour. <laughs> yeah. See, so. if you can find out, if you can't get the documents, then I'll send it work for like those, and if you can't get them, they'll foil them. So as soon as you can find out, you can let me know. I'll find out tomorrow. I'll just, I got David's number, so I'll go right to him. So. Perfect. That, those were the only two I had. Any other old business? Way to Steve, it's Zohydro, is what they're trying to pass at the FDA at a 50 time stronger opiate than hydromorphone. And the Chinese brand is W18. And then there's carfentanil. Yeah. <clears throat> and we've seen that as close as Western Ohio, or Eastern Ohio. So, for now, it's probably here. The concert season comes around. <coughs> Carnies. Well, yeah. <laughs> Another old business. Our next meeting will be on April 12th. The Training and Education Committee will meet at 1830 and the general body will meet at 1900. If nobody else has anything to bring up or any business, I'll ask for a motion to. I move that they Favor. Uh, I'm going to pose.